Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples were met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Shalom Aleichem, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. <coughs> Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as I greet you again with Christ is risen! He is risen, risen indeed! Hallelujah! I want to point out, first of all, the beautiful uh, first lesson from First Peter has uh, one of my favorite verses. First Peter 1, 9. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy. That's the mark, the true mark of the Christian. Inexpressible and It's on, right? I heard some grumblings from the audience, so <laughs> it's something I did wrong. Inexpressible joy. An aklaveto, inexpressible joy. Of course, if there's a tragedy, even Paul, this great victor, you know, he says in one of those letters, you know, um, my friend almost died, but God saved him so that I would not have grief upon grief. So Christians can grieve. Maybe more, maybe deeper, it's hard to say, than non-Christians. But underneath are the everlasting arms, underneath is the hope underneath is the joy that wants to bubble up and will do so at the appropriate time. 
inexpressible and glorious joy to think of that. First Peter 1 9. That's the mark of the Christian. And it says in our text as well, when he showed them his first of all, when he appeared to them and said, Peace be with you, it doesn't say it here, but they were saying, Whoa, this is what's going on here. The doors are locked and he appears. And he's not a ghost because he's got these marks yet, which must be by special dispensation because if you go to heaven with one leg, are you going to be peg leg in heaven? <laughs> no. If you go to heaven, if you die blind, you're going to be blind and, you know, all, everything will be made new. Jesus died with these marks in his hands. But they were retained in the resurrection body. My question is, when I see Jesus, when you see Jesus, will he still have that or will that, will that be gone by then? I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. So he appeared behind closed doors. We don't have a lot of hints of what the life to come is like. But we have a couple from the descriptions of Jesus, and here he, he can appear and disappear. But when he appears, you recognize him for what he is. You recognize him. You just know who it is, even though you've never seen him before, even though there were no photographs or anything like that. So all of our pictures of Jesus and Paul, some people say Paul was bow-legged and small. Maybe from riding a donkey too much. But one thing we know is that we'll be able to move around without benefit of having to pay your travel agent. You just go wherever you want to be and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth and so you don't have to have a bucket list. You can just wait and you will do all of those things. You can go over the Niagara Falls in a barrel or without a barrel, whatever you want to do. <laughs> whatever you want to do. Because he rose, we too shall rise. And when we see him, we will be like him. Well, we can't. You know, we're just flesh and blood, you and I, and bound by space and time, and, but wow, mm. nobody's going to throw us off the airplane either, <laughs> because there won't be an airplane, we'll just go wherever we want. So he showed them, he showed them the evidence, it's really me, it's really me. Thomas wasn't with them. And so they told him, and he had to live by believing. And he didn't believe. <clears throat> he heard the Easter story, he said, yeah, right. Which is what a lot of people, a lot of people. <clears throat> Thursday at the LCMC meeting, I ran into a former student who was uh, in charge of the, or involved deeply with the Christian-Muslim dialogue. It meets the third Sunday afternoon, and whoa, that's a tough one. Jewish-Christian dialogue is easy compared with that, because they don't believe that. See, the Quran says, Muhammad says, he, he wasn't crucified. No, 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 he didn't get crucified. Uh, well, if he wasn't crucified, dead and buried, and then they miss the, the resurrection. And that story, when we hear it, it just fills us, it fills us with expectation. Mm. So, a week later, what were they doing that week? It began kind of nice to know what they did all week. They must have been higher than kites. But they must have said, you saw them, right? We saw them, right? We, we, we did, right? I mean, uh, he, he showed us, right? And, uh, he's not here now? He just, he's just disappeared? 
What did they say all that week? Well, if you're a Christian playwright, you could have a, you could put a play in that week and have interesting things being said. But then a, a week later, he did it again. They were same thing. They were again in the house, and the doors were shut because, well, they killed Jesus, you know, and uh, who knows who's next. And there were some that were next. So they were gathered together. He appears, and uh, right away, well, he says the same thing. Now, the first time I said it in Hebrew, Shalom Aleichem, then I remembered Jesus didn't speak Hebrew, he spoke Aramaic. So it would be Shalom Aleichem. But you can tell that it's kind of similar. You're, you just have to accept that that's good Aramaic, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then he right away said, Thomas, come here. And typical, this is what God does. If you, have the, if you have a toothache, he knows what tooth it is, and he will take care of it. Of course, most of the time he'll say, go to your dentist. And <laughs> <laughs> but if there is no Novocaine, St. Augustine, he was that 400 A.D., never mind the good old days. Give me the days where they have good dentists, that's all I need. And he had a toothache, it wouldn't go away, and it was, there was no dentist, or maybe there were dentists, he said, I'm not going to one of those guys. And they prayed, and his toothache went away. Mm -hmm. The moral of that story and the moral of this story is Jesus knows your needs. He knows where you're hurt. And you will know that it is God in your life because nobody else can touch you there. Thomas, look, look. Be not faithless, but believing. And that wasn't, he didn't, he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. My Lord, my God. Tradition has it he went to India. I mean, Thomas went to There's traditions of where the disciples went, and they were all killed before their time. <coughs> so, then it ends. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. No, it does not say, more blessed are they who have not seen me mm -hmm. and believe. It's, just, it's equal. You can see me, something, but if you don't see me, you can hear it and you can believe. And as you believe, I will come into you like oatmeal in the morning or like hot dogs at the ballpark. I will come, I will give you energy and hope and <coughs> but people are in these last days seeing Jesus. I've heard one miracle story among you in the Maya. Uh, so when you come to see me when Rene sets up, up this uh, meeting because you're not coming in, in droves, uh, you're staying away in droves. <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll call you. We got your number. We'll call you. <laughs> Come on and see Pastor Mark, and I'll ask you. Uh, well, if you want to tell me about some remarkable spiritual experience, that'll just naturally happen. That'll just naturally happen. But then I'll also ask you about how you feel about Pastor Ed, because I was told when I came here that. Pastor had passed away too early, too quickly, too suddenly, and there's grief coming out of the windows of the church. And I have experienced that in talking with people. One of the questions I normally ask is how you how you coping with the, the loss. And on a scale of one to ten, the, the ten means I my life is still pretty chaotic because of that. I can't get a grip. Uh, two, there's, there's nobody down in the twos and threes. There are people in the fives that, that are able to go on. But I guess I want to tell you that although I don't know him, never met him, our paths were 
uh, strangely uh, parallel in terms of uh, church membership and even uh, theology, but he has been described to me as in various ways um, the uh, What is that phrase now? It's the, the life of the party. The life of the party. The life of the party. One person said, he came to visit me at work and uh, all of the up other people in the office, he started telling jokes and they all started to gather around him. I thought it was uh, <clears throat> Bill Murray and uh, <laughs> talking to the people in that movie. His, uh, his doctor wants to commit him to an institution and he drives away thinking, I finally got rid of this guy. He comes back, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Bill Murray has got the whole staff in, the doctors and nurses gathering around him. He's telling jokes, they're laughing, and obviously you can't be too sick if you're telling jokes and doctors are laughing. Larger than life is another phrase. Um, he sang loud. The same song every Easter, and it was touching, and there were many things about him that were touching, but he's gone. So how are you doing? How are you doing with that? Um, I don't have special private training in grief, but I've been around the block a few times, and I... I do listen and I do love, and I'll be happy to talk with you about that. And I simply want to say to the group, um, he was a pastor, and his greatest joy would be that you're following Jesus. That would, that would, would really make him happy. If, mm -hmm. if your grief just refuses to go away, well, there's people that aren't here because they can't come here. And I've, I've, I have run into this before, that the grief is uh, so great that they can't come to church without crying. And I usually say, well, don't come to church. God doesn't want you to cry. And start anyway. happier than he, we can possibly imagine. He's eating peaches, and he's never had a peach that tastes that juicy. <laughs> and I don't know if he liked fish. Jesus did eat fish in a, another text, and that my wife doesn't like that because she hates fish. So, <laughs> but whatever you want. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Uh, dear Lord, <coughs> we do no grief. We do no loss. But because we know you, we know that everything will be restored. Everything that, that the grasshopper and the canker ache will be restored. And as this outer nature of ours is wasting away, the new nature is being renewed daily. And of course, with the weather you're sending these days, Lord, that is even easier. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Amen.